Uh, greetings once again i welcome you to my youtube channel in today's video we'll be dealing with maps which is a grade 11 and grade 12 content but the question that we'll be answering here is from grade 11 grade 12 a uh, previous question paper is question two it reads Puseletso was invited to the University of Pretoria for an interview. She used the map in Anesha B to get to her destination. Study the map in Anesha B and answer the questions that follows. When we look at this map in Anesha B, we can see we see Botswana there. Limpopo, Gauteng, Lesotho, Free State, uh, Northern Cape, and Northwest Province, and other small cities like Gauteng, Pretoria, Bretz, Rustenburg, uh, and many more. So let's look at the first question. The first question says that how many provinces are represented on the map? So when we look at this map, we see Limpopo, one. How thing is also a province, two. Free State is also a province, three. Northern Cape, four. Uh, Northwest, five. So I see five provinces here. The answer is going to be five. We are having five provinces. 2.2. Which neighboring country is found on the western side of Limpopo? So what we need to do, we go and locate Limpopo. Uh, this is Limpopo up here. So here at Limpopo here, we must draw what we call a compass direction, imaginary compass direction. Obviously, we're going to have, we follow this direction here because they've showed us that north is pointing upward. So we're going to draw our compass direction here, knowing that we are having north, south, east, and west this side. So if you check, uh, the western side of Lepopo, we are having Botswana. The answer for this is Botswana. Let's write. And then 2.3. 2.3 say that identify the scale used on the map. So if you check on the map here, the scale that we are having here is a bus scale. Bar scale. We are having two types of scale. Don't forget, it's a number scale and a bar scale. So in this case, they have used a bar scale. So our answer here is a bar scale. Number four. Give a set of direction that Puseletso should use when traveling from Freiburg to Pretoria. So if you check here, she's from. Uh, Freiburg. Obviously, the first one, the first bullet, uh, we're gonna say drive toward northeast. We are giving the direction drive toward northeast. Number two, she must use N14. Number three, she must pass four towns. And then she must arrive at Houten to say that she must enter Houten province. And then at N1, 
Pretoria is located. Pretoria situated on the N1 simple as this now we move to the next question which is uh let's or claim that the actual distance that she will cover when traveling from Freiburg to Pretoria will be more than 450 kilometers. Verify her claim by using of the map and the scale to calculate the actual distance as the crow flies. Okay, we must identify these two locations. We must also not forget that we must measure this bar scale. We must first measure this bar scale. We can see that when I measure the original question paper using my ruler here, I found that the length of the bar scale is 2,5 centimeter. We write it down. It's 2,5 centimeter. Using my ruler. This is a distance, or this is the length of the bar scale. So now I want us to convert this bar scale into a number scale. So the length is 2,5 centimeters, but the actual length of this bar scale is 100 kilometers. So how do we deal with this kind of questions? Is to understand that in MathLit, we cannot do anything as long as we are having different units. So we must convert this to the same units. We can remind ourselves of the method of King Harry. We said King Harry died miserable death called malaria, which is one zero 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 zero. So now if you look at the relationship between kilometer and centimeter which is from here to c from k to c here we can see that the relationship is hundred thousand because we are having five zeros so we are going to multiply this hundred thousand this hundred kilometers by one hundred thousand to convert it to centimeters so that we can have the same units we get we are now going to have two comma five centimeters is equal to 100 multiplied by 100,000 why do we multiply by 100,000 we are multiplying by 100,000 because we are converting kilometers to centimeters so now we're gonna have 2,5 is equal to you take your calculator you say 100,000 100 I mean multiply by 100,000 We found that is 10 million. This is 10 million. It's 10 million. We divide everything by 2,5. Divide everything by 2,5. So we're going to have 1 is 2. 4 million. So 1 unit on the map represent 4 million units in reality one units on the map represent 4 million units in reality so when we are done converting a bar scale into a number scale we go back to the question and locate the two locations Freiburg Freiburg and Pretoria we measure the distance on the map. Don't forget, when you use a ruler, it means that we are using, we are measuring a distance on the map. It's not the actual, it's not a real distance from Pretoria to Freiburg, but it's, it's a distance on the map. When I do the measurement, 10,9 centimeters. So I'm going to say 10,9 
is to what? X. We are looking for what? For the actual distance. We are looking for the actual distance. Then from here, you do the cross multiplication. We're going to say 4 million multiplied by 10,9. We found that centimeters so this is the actual distance and you should not forget that we cannot have a distance from town to town measured in centimeters we must convert this to what we must convert this to kilometers we divide it by hundred thousand we divide centimeters by hundred thousand we're gonna find that our distance is 436 kilometers is 436 kilometers so the distance from Freiburg to Pretoria the actual distance using our calculation is 436 kilometers and then she says she will drive more than 500 more than 450 kilometers so we can tell that the claim is what is invalid the claim is invalid. The claim is not true. And then we move. Let me divide this by here. So that I can get a space. We move to 2.5. When we look at 2.5, it says that. Pulets or pulets, pusselets, I mean left Pretoria at 13.30 she stopped twice once for 10 minutes again for 15 minutes to freshen up she arrived at Freiburg in Freiburg at 17.45 determine the average speed now they want us to calculate the speed okay what well, don't forget we calculate the speed of a person who is driving so what we need to do is to calculate the time the actual time that this pilot a person was driving so what we're gonna see, do we're gonna say time is equal to she reached Freiburg at 14 45 she left Pretoria at 13 13 13 13 we use a calculator we're gonna say 17 17 fact 45 Fact minus 13 fact 30 fact. We found that uh, it is four hours and 15 minutes. Four hours and 15 minutes that she used to travel from Pretoria to Freiburg. But this is not a driving time. She rested two times. 10 minutes and 15 minutes. And 10 plus 5, 15. 10 plus 15 is 25. We must remove this 25 minutes. Because we are looking for the actual time when she is driving. So from the answer that we have here, which is 4 hours, and 15 minutes we must remove uh, 25 minutes when we remove 25 minutes we can see that this person she was driving for three hours and 30 minutes she was driving for three hours and 30 minutes and now we are going to calculate what the speed or oh, 50 minutes my mistake 50 minutes she was driving for uh, 3 hours and 15 minutes. So we must convert this time to hours. We know that it's going to be 3 plus 50 divided by 60. We are dividing by 60 because we are converting the time to be in hours. So now we are going to have 3 plus 50 divided by 60. We find that the total time in hours is 3,83 hours. And then we go back to our triangle. This is our triangle. 
distance, speed, and time. So because we are looking for speed, we are going to say speed is equal to distance divided by time. Distance, we have calculated the distance on the previous question. We found that our distance was 436. The time, we just calculated the time now, is 3,83. So we use a calculator here. We are now going to say 436 divided by 3,86. This person was driving at a speed of 1, 1, 4 kilometers per hour. I rounded off this to the whole number. The speed is the the actual speed that I found in the calculator is 113,739134. But when I round this up, it gives me 114 kilometers per hour. This is the speed that she was driving on her way home from Pretoria to Freiburg. Now, the last question says that, name one disadvantage of driving during the day. 2.6. At this advantage of driving during the day could be a traffic, traffic delay. We can have a traffic delay when you drive during the day traffic delay thank you very much for watching this episode please do not forget to subscribe do not forget to like this video and also not to forget to share question must be left on the comment section i'll get back to you